Hi everybody and welcome to the second day of this course and without any further introductions we can just dive right in and into the basic statistics and key functions. So we are going to go about, about uh, key functions and distributions. And the main probability distribution used in statistics is the normal distribution, which is pictured here. It's an even, perfect, totally symmetrical distribution. And for example, um, height of the individuals in a certain kind of a crowd roughly follows in the normal distribution. Usually people tend to uh, large groups uh, follow this, so they go in the even line. There are some shorter people, higher, taller people, and uh, most of the people will uh, drop down around the mean, so to speak. And the key functions describes the distribution of observations. For example, we have a mean there. We have, we can see that the mean is located right on the center of the normal distribution. Are we going to have a standard deviation? How much this as you going to see the wiggled line there, which is the distribution line, how much it's, uh, how much variation is there? Is there more of a shorter or a taller people? And there is not that much of the people in the mean, or do we have a higher peak, so we have more people on the mean? So basically, uh, key functions are a way to describe the distribution itself, and this is, of course, the the statistical uh, analysis what we do. We are going to observe things and changes around and um, uh, and the karst, karst, what's the word? Characteristics of the uh, distribution. Damn, that was a hard word. <clears throat> so, the key functions. Uh, we have uh, Essential key functions here, usually what is most used. Uh, we have the mean, which is uh, usually arithmetic mean, and standard deviation, mean variation around the mean basically, and the median, which is the center of the distribution, and uh, fractiles, uh, for example, uh, median or distribution breakpoints, uh, how many parts like the uh, distribution is evenly distributed and the mode which is the most typical value of the distribution and the values usually summarize the average nature of the values by the variables in the data set and are measured of the variability of the all the dispersion of the distribution basically so there are just means to describe the distribution in some really meaningful way. And why I have the purple text there in the mean and standard deviation is because these are the most essential numbers or the key functions you could have in statistics. With just mean and standard deviation alone, you can basically calculate everything. You can calculate, um, uh, let's just say correlations, you can calculate uh, linear regressions. Of course, you have to do calculations more between them, but just with those two pieces of information, you can do practically anything. Everything builds on top of them. So how much uh, there is vari variation in the distribution and, and what is the mean value? These are the most important things in any analysis all the methodolic things you can possibly imagine. Okay, next up is the good old classic mean, or the average as in, it is in Excel. So it's usually called arithmetic mean in a mathematical form, but everybody just says mean. And the uh, it's a sum of the numbers divided by their number. You have probably done this a million times in school, so I'm not going to be to like uh, hang up on this, but it's a usually good indicator for normally distributed variables. If you have skewed var like um, uh, distribution, then it's going to pull the mean away from them. And this is also an important thing to understand because if you pull the mean somewhere around some kind of analysis method which are focused on the mean numbers, 
are also going to be skewed. So your results may vary quite a lot actually because of that. But that's something to keep in mind. N not the important right now. Now we are just talking about the mean. So that's it. It's simple. You have done this and you know what mean is. But let's still go through it, what it is. Okay, here it is, mean. I had done this already in school a million times. But you know what? Let's do it again. So let's go from the tip to butt. Uh, for example, here is the. Uh, let's assume we have um, height of people of 5. This could be uh, 163, 149, uh, 176, uh, 182, 193 centimeters. So those are the lengths of the people. And the calculation for the mean is, of course, uh, you sum the heights of the people and divide it by the number of people. And you get the result, which is 175.4 uh, centimeters. And here is also the equation here. And now this is where the people usually get problems in. They understand how to do basic calculation, but when they see it's in, in an equation form. They are a little bit like, what the hell this is? No, this is not that uh, uh, complicated. Usually when you just stare at the equations learning enough and read the description, what is what? For example, the X with the uh, hat on the top, it's just a mean. That's, that's what it means, mean. And then we have X uh, underscore one. It's, it just means that that's an observation number one. And there is the x2, which, uh, which is the absolute one, number 2. And the three dots is continue this path to infinite uh, when you run out of your observations. And the xn, the n is whatever your final number is then of the observation, basically. And it's divided by n, and n is the number of total observations in your data. N is, that's a good thing to know at this point. N is all observations, basically, all the cases on your study. And the another classic is the median, of course. And it divides the data into two equal groups based on the values of the variable. And the, um, it's a middle value of the distribution. Up to half of the observations are larger than the median itself. And the values here are sorted from the smallest to largest, and the middle one is the median value, basically. And a good measure for skewed, sc screwed? I think it's skewed, what I tried to... Screwed? How do you pronounce? Ah, who cares? Screwed distribution. It's, it's like, a, it's a little bit lopsided on the left or right. And for example, income is like this, usually like... A, there's uh, less of uh, really high income people and most of the people are in the lower end, more or less at least. And for the calculations of median, let's just assume that seven individuals do make a guess uh, number between 1 to 100. And this guessing game uh, produces following numbers. 1, 1, 50, 60, 65, 70, and 99. And the observations are sorted in the order of magnitude. Uh, for the median, we need a uh, number of people who voted, which is the n, number of people. And the number of people is seven here, because there are seven numbers, there are seven people voting here. And with the formula, we can calculate the running number of the median. And the median is, uh, n plus 1 divided by 2. So uh, we need the 7 here. There's a 7 people, and we can calculate from that. For example, it's a 7 plus 1 uh, divided by 2, which is 4. This means that the median is the fourth number of the uh, observation, like a line or a group there. So we can calculate that. First observation is 1, second observation is 2, third is the 50, and 60 is the fourth. So it's, the median is 60 here. So it's, it's basically that simple how the median works. 
So next one is the one of the big ones, the standard deviation. And the standard deviation tends to measure the variation in the uh, both sides of the mean. So it's quite simple actually to visualize. You are having, a, you are basically taking a mean how much the uh, observations are spread out in the data uh, around the mean. So you are taking the mean uh, dispersion of those observations around the mean. If you can visualize that in your head, it's quite simple number to take. So if you are having a flat or a really peak um, uh, standard deviation, the distribution is going to be a different number. For example, if you have a high peak, you have to have, to have a much uh, smaller standard deviation. But if you are going to have a really low and a long distribution, you want to have a higher standard deviation because the deviation is much more higher around the mean, basically. That's the basic idea of it. And itself, it's a iffy like number. What does it mean, actually? Somebody could think about that, but it's a really, really big indicator, an important indicator when we are doing statistical calculations. Okay, this is more of a practical example, and these figures will help you understand this much better. You can think standard deviation as a variation from the both sides of the mean, like in the upper corner, you see the low standard deviation has, a, um, let's call them wings, around the both sides of the mean, the wings are really small and the peak is really high. That means that the old observations are gathered around near the mean. So the standard deviation, the difference um, from the mean, it's going to be really small with the observations. But when you have high standard deviation, it's really fat and spread out. So the, all the observations are uh, far away from the mean. So the standard deviation is going to be higher, of course because of that, and the peak is going to be lower because there is no that much observations around the mean itself. And um, and there is the, also the second part of the figure, which is the pizza delivery times, the distribution of it. The mean value is 30 minutes, and there is, um, that's like the mean delivery time. And the one jump of a standard deviation is five minutes in this case. So two standard deviation is 20 minutes. So, oh, it's 10 minutes, sorry. So it's, it's sometimes it's not that intuitive to understand what the standard deviation means itself, uh, but here is how it works. So I think this is going to give you a little bit a great picture about it. But the most important part is to remember, this is how we calculate the mean margin of error and alter really important things in statistical analysis. So the deviation of the numbers is really essential. Okay, the practical side of how you calculate standard deviation. Um, let's take, take an example. Let's assume that five students have received following grades in the test in a one to five scale. Uh, there is one, three, three, four, and five. And the mean value of grades is 3.5, 3.2, sorry. And standard deviation is calculated with the following formula. And when you look at the formula, you are first, uh, what? But this is practically quite easy to make. We are going to take square root of the whole thing here, the division, what we are going to do. But the important point is here to understand, remember, the x with the hat is the mean. So you are always taking the 3.2 and put it in the same place in the formula. And the x1 would be, for example, the uh, one st student who did sleep all the classes and did get one, for example. It's one minus the mean, which is 3.2. And then you're taking an exponent of it. And you sum it with the x2, which would be the next grade, which is three. And you are again, uh, minus uh, it with um, uh, subtracted with uh, uh, 3.2 and they can explain the yeah, for uh, for example so long as you uh, run out uh, of the observations here 
So we are going to bound to have this kind of formula, which is stated here, color coded for your pleasure. So we are going to have rotating, uh, basically mean here, which is always uh, subtracted from the um, grade what the person is having. So there is lots of repetition, and the whole thing is divided by the uh, amount of individuals, which is phi, and you are going to get a standard deviation from this, from this which is the 1.33. Quite simple, actually. It's not that hard. It just looks sometimes really messy when you are having lots of observations, but computers do this. But now you know how it's calculated. It isn't that um, I like a hard thing to do. Then we have the mode, which is basically the most common value, the value of the variable with the highest frequency. So it's it's not that commonly used. Sometimes this is going to be useful. And there is a practical example of this. If we have a distribution of, let's say, let's just say uh, lower education people, which is uh, for 140 individuals, we have secondary educated people, which had the distribution of uh, uh, 252 people, and a higher educated people, which has a frequency of uh, 154 people. So the mode is the 252, which is the highest number and the most uh, common value here. So there is only three values, of course, but there could be more values, but that's the most common and the most highest one. And sometimes it's useful if there's a, like um, big distributions and you are trying to find some certain kind of a number. So it could have been utilizations, but it's not that commonly used. And here the same with the figure form. And yeah, basically you, the point here is also that uh, you could have two values which are the mode. For example, here in the left panel, we have one mode, which is the number three, because it's the highest value and most frequent one. And we have two modes in the uh, right plan panel, because we have the value two and six, which are in the same like a frequency on the distribution. So they both are the mode. So there are two mode values, basically. So Sometimes this could be easy if you are trying to find um, some distribution which has this kind of fluctuation and you want to see the peaks, so to speak, all the numbers related to that. It could be useful sometimes. Okay, then there are the fractals, which are pretty straightforward actually. They basically split the data or the distribution in equal shares. So there are quartiles, which distributes the, the, um, the distribution in four shares. There's quintiles, which is the five shares, and the deciles, which is the ten shares, usually used with an income data. But in the picture, you can see what it is, basically. It, it's quite straightforward. It's a split data in equal shares. Nothing weird about it. And here we go to the final thing, which is the uh, distribution shape. We already talked about the normal distribution, which is the uh, beautiful and elegant and the perfect distribution where the mean is right down the middle. But then we are bound sometimes to have a negative and positive skew where the distributions are lopsided on either side. For example, the negative skew is when the peak is on the left side of the, uh, so sorry, right side of the distribution and the positive skew is when it's on the left side of the distribution. So the point here is that the negative skew is the tail in the, is in the negative direction. So there are fewer smaller values than we would expect from a, like a normal distribution. And of course, the positive skew is the tail is in the positive direction and there are fewer larger values than we would normally expect with the normal distribution. So it's compared to the normal distribution itself. And here is also the same 
bit more technical manner here and maybe this is going to be easier to understand and also what I want to say is the you have to understand when you have a positive or negative skew in a distribution it will affect highly on the key values also for example mean is really sensitive for skew dis distribution and of course many of the statistical methods will use means as their toolset so you have to be in mind of that. Some models do want to have a normal distribution. They don't like when you have a skewed distribution. You are bound to have wrong results by that. So you may need to do some conversions or uh, try different kind of functions or something like that to return it to the normal distribution. So for example, taking a lot of natural logarithm from uh, income data will usually repair the distribution to use in, uh, in a certain kind of models. So this is all for today. I recommend you, you now go to the uh, part with the demos and do the demos for this uh, lecture series. For example, we are compound to have, a, we are going to calculate some means, uh, uh, standard deviations and stuff like this and the demos and I'm going to see so how it's done in Excel form and there are going to be exercises for that or just one because when you know how to do it once you know to do it, do it all. But hopefully this lecture was okay, it was not too fast or too slow if it's too slow, don't mind me, just keep ahead. And if it's too fast, you can always send me an email that next time I know that I'm not trying to be a race car driver or something like that with my lectures. But now, good luck, and we see ourselves uh, at the next time. Bye.